Welcome to TFI and the first ever set of benchmarks from the new TFI PC Hardware Performance Benchmark Suite, the 23 point stress test for Autodesk Inventor, where in this first ever set of results, we're going to be putting two PCs up against each other through the 23 tests to see how they do. And I'll talk about the results at the end of the video. But first, the two systems that I'm going to be comparing are my own personal rig against a Dell Precision T5610 workstation, which I have plucked out of one of the offices that I work at. This was genuinely bought to be an inventor workstation until I came along and went, that, that's, that's no good, you <laughs> need to replace that pronto. And I'm gonna run that through the stress tests to show you exactly why I plucked it out of the office and said it was no good for Autodesk Inventor. So the specs of the systems, my system as of today, the system is inside the Fantex Enthu Evolve ATX tempered glass case. The CPU is the Intel i7-4790K Devil's Canyon CPU, four cores, eight threads, clocked at 4.6 gig. On top of the CPU is the NZXT Kraken X62, all-in-one liquid cooler. For the RAM, it's got 32 gig of Corsair Vengeance. It has to be DDR3 because of the 4790K, and I believe that's clocked at 1866 megahertz. The graphics card is the MSI NVIDIA GTX 1070, the power supply, not that it really matters much for performance, is the Corsair AX760i and the hard disk is the, well, the boot drive that I've got the applications running on is the Samsung M.2 SM961 PCI Express NVMe solid state drive, that being the 512 gig variant of that stick. The Dell Precision T5610 workstation has dual Xeons in there. It's got dual Xeon E52620 V2. That Xeon is a six core CPU, giving this workstation a total of 12 cores. That's 24 threads with hyper threading. The Xeons are clocked at 2.2 gigahertz, I believe, with a turbo up to 2.6 gigahertz. It has 16 gig of DDR3 1600 megahertz ECC RAM. The graphics card inside the Dell is the Quadro M4000 and the hard disk is a Crucial BX200 SATA solid state drive, the 256 gig variant. Both systems running Windows 10 64 bit. They're both gonna be put through with 23 stress tests on Autodesk Inventor. I'm gonna show the results right now and we'll talk about the results towards the end.
Reed, welcome back. Okay, what I'm going to do now is talk a bit more about the results and uh, also a few words about the systems that have been tested. I'm not going to go over each of the tests individually, that'll take forever. Uh, but I'm going to waffle on a little bit about the two systems, so just take a look at how long's left on the video and decide whether or not you want to stick around and listen to me waffle. It's entirely up to you, mate. It's entirely up to you. Right, so the two systems that were tested, I know they're not apples to apples. They're not the same type of system. It's, they're not meant to be. These are just the first two systems of many completely different systems that will be put through this 23-point test, with the idea being it's to give people an indication of if you buy this type of system, it's going to perform like this in comparison to these other systems. That's the whole point of these tests. And these two systems just happen to be the first two on the bench. So the first system is my own rig. It's evolved over the years. And if you're looking to buy something similar, if you're looking to what I've got and thinking, oh, I want to buy something similar to that. My system is approaching end of life. Well, the, the CPU and the motherboard are anyway. The graphics card, the hard disk, the power supply, the you know the case, all that kind of stuff, the cooler, that's all current gen. I've been replacing those as of as things have you know times gone by. But the CPU and the motherboard are approaching end of life. The 4790K and the Asus Maximus 7 Ranger, they're approaching end of life. You'd probably go for something like the 7700K on the Z270 uh, chipset motherboard if you wanted something like mine. And in terms of monetary value, it's approximately £1,600 to buy my system, and it'll be ballpark similar to buy an equivalent i7 system. This system is not a workstation, though. I'm just, I've, got to, I've got to be in my bonnet about this. People classing a computer they work on as a workstation. Just because you work on a PC, it doesn't make it a workstation, right? I don't have a workstation. This is a consumer-grade PC with an i7 in it and a gaming motherboard and just standard RAM, a gaming bloody graphics card. It's not a workstation. The Dell is a workstation. It's got a Xeon in there. It's got ECC RAM. It's got a professional graphics card in there. It's a proper work. That's a workstation. A PC you work on is not a workstation. Anyway, just, 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 I've just got a problem with that for some reason. As, but the Dell itself, right, the Dell, it's a bit of a sorry state of affairs, actually, the Dell. The, the way it is right now, as it's been tested, isn't even how it was bought. The engineering manager that I was talking about earlier on bought two Dell Precision workstations for the office when he had a, an urgent staffing requirement. He didn't have an immediate avenue of advice for which workstation to buy, so he went to the Dell website and based upon all the market and patter that's on the Dell website about precision optimizations and productivity gains and best PC for the job, blah, 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 blah. And the end price being probably about two and a half grand, he assumed that that would be fine. It's got a Xeon in, it's got a Quadro in, it's got, you know, X amount of RAM, X amount of hard disk space. It's gonna be fine, it'll be fine. It's not fine, as it turns out. I've obviously came in and I've went, you need to get rid of that PC pronto because that guy can be a lot more productive if you buy him something better. We did, he is. And what I did was take, I, I took both of these Dell Precision workstations away. And fortunately, it had a, a dual socket Xeon motherboard in for some reason. So I took the Xeon out of one, put it in the other, combined both sets of RAM to give 16 gig of RAM, took out the old Quadro, put in an M4000 and a SATA solid state drive. And it's still terrible, <laughs> still absolutely terrible. Uh, but it's a lot better than what they were using. So there was a real engineer in a global engineering office using that Dell for a year. So if anyone's out there going, well, you would know it's a complete wrong PC for the job. Why would you? But people buy these things. That's the, that's the whole point of these tests. People buy these things thinking they're going to be fine. And yeah, Inventor works on them. Inventor will work, but it's just terrible. It's not the best. You can get a lot better for the money if you know what to buy for. And that's the whole point of this test. So regarding the results, the only thing I really want to talk about the results, there wasn't anything really surprising. These are only the first two set of benchmarks that have come in. So there's nothing really too much to compare them with. There's not a lot of context here. But one thing I do want to call, I want to call Autodesk out on this, because if we go over to this website here, this is on the Autodesk Knowledge Network. It is the Autodesk statement of support for multi-core processors. This is Autodesk saying that these solutions or features in Inventor support multi-core operations because historically Inventor has always been a single threaded application and as the years go by they're implementing more and more support for multi-core processors within various feature sets within Inventor. So you'd think as time goes by and more functions become multi-threaded things get better things are going to become a lot faster 
but it's not it's not what I'm seeing. It's, it's really not what I'm seeing. It's no coincidence. I've intentionally included every single one of these functions into my 23 point stress test to make sure that if I have a high core CPU, or in this case, a dual Xeon with 12 cores and 24 threads, I'm able to see what kind of gains we get in these functions over and above a standard four core consumer grade i7. So what happened was the complete opposite. In fact, in every single one of these tests, the Dell workstation with its 12 cores and 24 threads took, in some cases, twice as long to process these functions as it did on the i7. And it's not like the i7 is multi-generations newer than the Xeon either. It's a Haswell-based i7. It's only one generation newer than that Xeon. There's not that big of a difference between the two of them in terms of architecture. Yes, the clock speed on the i7 is much greater, but what Autodesk is saying is that these functions here favor multi-core over clock speed. So I've got 12 cores. Right, let's do some basic maths here. The Dell Precision Workstation has 12 cores and they're running at 2.1 gigahertz. That is 25 gigahertz of total processing power. Doesn't work like that though, because you've got Intel Speedstep, it turbo boosts the CPU up to 2.6. Speedstep doesn't work in the way that that'll then be 12 times 2.6. All cores don't run at 2.6, but what I was seeing as I was monitoring the tests is that on average, the cores were running at approximately 2.4 gigahertz. So at 2.4 times 12 cores, the Dell was running with approximately 29 gigahertz of total processing power, 29. The i7 has four cores at 4.6. Now they are all running maximum all the time at 4.6, 18.4 gigahertz. So you've got 29 gigahertz on the, on the Dell versus 18 gigahertz of total processing power on the i7 CPU. Why didn't all of these tests favor the Dell? I, I honestly don't know. I can't answer that other than all I can assume is that Inventor has some serious optimization to go through because one of the most requested features within Autodesk Inventor is that they implement more features to support multi-core CPUs. And if they're doing that and it's not working, then something needs to happen. Something needs to be addressed. And that's all I can say. I'll flash the tests up on screen so you can see exactly what I mean. All of these tests that you're looking at right now support multi-core processing. That's what Autodesk is saying, but that's not what the results actually reflected. The only one of these tests that actually favored Dell was the ray tracing where all 24 cores went balls to the wall 100% to finish that ray trace. The rest of these, if they are utilizing multi-core, they're only doing it in very, very short bursts still favoring clock speed over multi-core. Well, that's no good to anybody. It's no good to anybody if these functions are using multi-core, but in such small bursts that you're not gonna see a benefit, then what, what is the point? What is the point? I think the software needs optimization because when you've got 12 cores over four cores, you should be seeing, at the very least, a much, much, much smaller gap between the results. If anything, I would be expecting to see the Dell winning at those tests rather than being twice as slow. So anyway, that's food for thought. That's food for thought. I could bang on about that for ages, but I'm not gonna, I think I've made my point. The rest of the results, uh, I think were to be expected. The i7 does have a higher clock speed. Invented pretty much in most cases on the non-multi-core supported operations. It pretty much scales in a linear fashion with clock speed. In terms of things like hard disk speed, we weren't seeing, even on the test for file save migration, opening large assemblies, importing you know, the, the SolidWorks assembly. Yeah, it's disk operations, but you're not bottlenecking the hard disk. You know, when you've got hard disks that read and write at, you know, three gigabytes per second and 1.5 gigabytes per second, it's not as simple as that, I know. But, you know, when you work with 500 megabyte data sets, you, you, you're not getting a bottleneck on the hard disk anywhere near enough to be seeing the benefits of NVMe hard disks. One of the tests that I'm gonna plan on doing in the future is taking out the NVMe drive and then sticking in a, either a mechanical drive or just a standard SATA solid state drive and seeing which of these tests, if any, actually do yield different results when you've got a super fast hard disk in, swap that out with a slow or slower hard disk. Uh, so that's, again, the whole point of these tests is to highlight system changes like that and what kind of benefits they can bring in these suite of workflows, which pretty much cover not everything someone's gonna do throughout the working day, but a vast majority of real world workflows. All right guys, I think that'll do. That'll do for the first set of benchmarks. Stay tuned, I've got future ones lined up. I've already performed them. 
I've already performed them, but I need to do them again. It's one thing I didn't mention is that the Inventor is a goddamn nightmare to benchmark. It really is. I was running a test, for example, doing the shrink wrap, right? Doing the shrink wrap of the large assembly. It would finish on the i7 system in say 80 seconds. I would cancel it or finish it, close Inventor, reopen Inventor, do the exact same test again, and it would finish 15% slower. Shut it down, open it up again, it'll finish 15% faster. Shut it down, open again, 10%. It was so random that I had to perform each one of these tests five or six times over to kind of get a good idea and be confident on the score that I'm logging. So it's really, it's really frustrating benchmarking inventors because things are so heavily CPU weighted that even if you've shut down as many things as you can, and another point which I need to make as well for the people that have stuck around this long is the antivirus. It makes a bigger difference than I thought. Again, that's another test I can do. But I had Bitdefender running and Bitdefender was slowing down the opening of large assemblies by anything up to 20%. I closed down Bitdefender, things opened a lot faster. It didn't make any difference to when the, the tests that were just pure raw compute power, things like model feature tree rebuilds and shrink wrapping files, but for opening large assemblies, Bitdefender slowed things down massively. So I had to shut down antivirus on all the tests and I need to do that again on the test, the other tests on the other systems that I've already run, including I've got an i5 2500K clocked at 5.1 gigahertz, which I'm going to run this test on as well. So when Inventor scales with clock speed, how do you think it'll do on a cheap 2500K at 5.1 gigahertz? Mm, stay tuned for that one. Right. Hopefully this was, uh, this was enjoyable or informative. I don't know. Take your pick. I'll see you in the next one. Toodles.